Hello, this is chapter four of cost accounting. It is accounting for factory overhead. And so, um, good chapter, there's three, there's four main things that you have to know on this one um, for the test. And it's, and we'll, we'll go over that as we get into it. Um, but just to open it up is uh, Sherwin-Williams, this is the introduction thing, Sharon Williams offered the following advice to its painting contractors at the company website. Overhead costs are a very big deal costing companies large and small thousands of dollars each year. Cost estimation isn't just about labor expenses and material costs. It's about making a profit, a profit that's built into every job bid. It begins with identifying and accounting for all costs, labor, materials, taxes, scaffolding, permits, lights, gas, office supplies, rent, and everything else associated with operating your business. And basically what that means is everything that's not tied to the materials and labor is factory overhead. So all costs incurred that are not chargeable directly to the finished product are called factory overhead. Um, also known as indirect factory expenses, indirect manufacturing costs, and my personal favorite factory burden so you can pretty much call, call them overhead or burden I like that I like that word burden um, so factory overhead includes indirect materials consumed in the factory such as glue and nails and the production of wooden furniture and oil use for maintaining factory equipment um, indirect factory labor such as wages of janitors forklift operators and supervisors and overtime premiums paid to all factory workers. And three, all other indirect manufacturing expenses such as insurance, property taxes, and depreciation on the factory building and equipment. And so that's the basics of it. Um, and then we get into uh, variable, co variable costs. So variable costs are uh, vary in direct proportion to volume changes. So um, there's variable and there's fixed. And then there's mixed, which is also called semi-variable. So variable is um, something that changes depending on how many you make. So if you make a thousand of something, and it costs you the variable cost is a dollar per unit, um, it'll go up depending on how many you make. So variable could be like electricity used to power machines, um, supplies, and small tools expense. Uh, Depreciation expense, expense computed on the units of production basis. So like if you run a machine and it costs you, if you run it to make a thousand units, it's going to cost you more electricity than if you used it to only run 500 units. So the cost goes up as you make more. Where fixed is the electricity used to heat and light the factory. That's the same month in, year out. Property taxes doesn't change. Depreciation on equipment computed on the straight line basis doesn't change. Manager salary doesn't change. Insurance on factory and building is the same consistently. So they had a good graph here. We're variable. As volume goes up, cost goes up. Whereas if it's fixed, fixed costs are like horizontal. So as volume goes up, cost stays the same because it's doesn't cost you any more on fixed to make a thousand versus two thousand. And then there's similar variable, which can have a step up procedure, or um, semi variable, which just has a normal flat going up. Uh, and we'll we'll see that here. Um, analyzing semi variable factory overhead costs, the method you're going to learn and use is the high low method. So the high low method compares a high production volume and it's related cost to a low production volume and it's related cost. And so you do this to find, it'll, um, and then the assignment, it'll give you a whole bunch of months and the units you made for the month versus the cost. You take the highest and the lowest. And so what you do is you compare the highest and the lowest, um, divide the cost of the lowest by the um, the units of the lowest, and then you do the same with the highest one, 
and then what happens is it gives you a rate, a, a per unit rate, and um, you're going to times that unit rate by the units of the month, bam, bam, and then um, subtract out that variable versus the total cost of the month will give you your um, fixed. So you're doing the high-low method to find the fixed cost because it's not going to give you the fixed in the problem, but it'll give you the variable. You'll be able to find the variable to whittle it down to the fixed. Um, yeah, yeah, variable cost. Yeah, so high-low. So the high for the month was 2000 and it cost 5000 The low of the month was you made 1000 and it will cost you 3000 in electricity. And so um, you take the 2000 um, difference in cost. So you subtract the high cost of the month versus the low to get that number. When you take the high unit of the month minus the low, divide the change of 2000 in electricity by the units to give the per unit basis and then times that 2 by the units you made. And so that total cost subtracted by the variable that you found gives you your fix. So you're just whittling it down. So that's 1. Um, there's also the scatter graph method, which isn't taught in the class. And um, the least squared regression method, not taught in the class. Don't worry. Um, and then we'll get to... So the high-low is going to be a big one to get used to. You want more practice on that. Um, I'm trying to find... Oh, and then you ne are going to need to find the... Um, on this one, how much uh, the unit cost. And so uh, another thing about the overhead on this chapter is fixed, the more units you make, the cheaper it is per unit fixed cost. So if your fixed cost a month was $1,000 overhead and you made 1,000 bottles of Coke, it'd be a dollar per Coke would be the cost to you. So you charge each unit cost you a dollar overhead per Coke. But if you only made a, one Coke, it, that one Coke will cost you $1,000 in overhead. So the more you make, the cheaper your fixed costs become because you can spread the fixed cost over it. And so that's one thing you got to no, um, figure out is it'll give you um, a bunch of costs, but the fixed, the fixed factory overhead will shrink depending on how many you make. So six thousand. So if you make six thousand units times a dollar fifty, but let's say it's a slow month and it's only made five thousand, divide it by five thousand, which will give you a dollar eighty. So now your cost is going up per unit. Where if you made seven thousand five hundred, it will drop it to a dollar twenty. So your cost is going down. So that's another thing on the chapter you got to be able to do is uh, break it down: the direct materials, direct labor, fixed overhead, variable overhead, and the fix is what's going to change depending on how many you make. Um, on the next one, the next big thing you got to know, and I'll do an explanation, I'll do an um, example video on this. I can probably do a couple because these aren't always big problems. Um, so on this one, if you use the machine method, units of production, so assuming it costs you $20 an hour in overhead to run a machine for the factory, and you run it for um, 175 hours. It gives you direct labor hours in this problem, but you don't need that if it says what are the mach you're using the um, machine hour method. So you take the $20 times 175 dollar 175 machine hours gives you 3,500 in cost to you to run that machine. Total cost of the job. Now you add in the direct materials and the direct labor plus the 3500 gives you the total cost of doing that job, which might be making chairs, making steel beams, what, uh, what have you. And then the final part is 
how to apply under absorption of overhead, factory overhead, or, or under applied, or over applied, over absorbed. Because sometimes you might, there's a, you're, there's a budget you might follow, and so you estimate 5,000 in overhead, but you find out it actually costs you 5,500. So that 5,000 difference was under applied. You didn't apply enough. And so when you um, close it out, you'll, um, it's over applied. So you want to debit the under over applied factory overhead, credit fact, uh, factory overhead. And then, um, but if you didn't know, like let's say it was a huge amount, yeah, there was a huge absorption amount. Um, you're going to use the pro, you have to prorate it. So you take um, the work in process, total work in process, total finished goods, total cost of goods sold. Add them all up, it gives you 200,000, or let's say 100%. So now you take the work in process divided by the total amount, gives you percent. Same with the finished goods divided by total, gives you percent. And so so and so forth with the cost of goods sold, then you times that under or over apply. Like say, let's say you have fifteen thousand in under or over applied. You take the fifteen times the percentage to find out how much to charge each different part of the job for the cost of the under or over. And in this case, if it's under, you're going to debit them and then credit the under and over. But if it's over, um, you're going to debit the under and over and credit the work and process finished goods and cost of goods only if it's material and it's a high, it was, you're, you're under, you're, what you thought was going to be cost was a lot more or less than what you budgeted. Otherwise, you can just always close it to fact, um, cost of goods sold. And so that's the main parts of this chapter. Um, that's what you're really going to need to know. Yeah, the, the book has a lot more stuff in it, this chapter, but not necessarily needed, especially for the test. So thank you, and I'm, I'll do an example on these ones, of course. And thank you for uh, tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll see you for the next one. Ooh.